Now this is a video that I've wanted to make for a very long time. So you may have seen the video where I speak Russian after a year and a half having studied zero grammar. And the idea for that was that I always heard how difficult Russian was, so I just wanted to see how much I could absorb in the year and a half. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave it in the description. But in this video, I'm going to talk about all the things that I did to be able to uh, get that level that I did that you could see in that video. But if you don't know me, my name is Mark, and this is Language Come Up, a place where I come up and you do too. So I got into the language learning community in 2014, and during this time, all the top guys were basically using two books, Asimo and Teach Yourself. So when I started Russian, I knew that I wanted to get that Asimo book. Actually, I already had it, so I knew that it was pretty good. So I just needed to start using it. And for the first couple of weeks, I started doing like the Lucas, Luca Lampriello bi-directional translation method, which is his method, he really loves it. Um, I did it for a couple weeks, and um, it wasn't for me, so I kind of needed to devise a strategy to use the book for me, right? Um, there's actually a method that Asimo also suggests, lays out for you, but I did it in the following way. So in the beginning of my Russian studies, what I really needed to do was just implement that habit. So I told myself I'm only going to study this book for 25 minutes a day, and that was it. So it seems like a little, but I think it's actually one of the best things I ever did because by only giving myself that time period, I really ensured that Russian became a part of my life as opposed to, you know, setting a long you know, two hours or whatever, and always failing, right? So I, I didn't fail. So what I did is, well, Asking Mill is a book that has 100 lessons, right? So I didn't look at any of the charts, any of the grammar explanations. Um, there is one side where there's the Russian, and on the other side there is the English. So what I would do is I, I would read through the dialogues in Russian, check in the English, and then I would listen to the audio, right? And um, I could you know, just kind of breeze over to see what the English was as I was following the Russian. The next thing I would do is listen to the audio again, but this time looking at the side of the English more. And uh, this was an interesting technique that I learned from Luca Lampriello when he was talking about how he did the Asimo method, what's his method like using that book, uh, that bi-directional translation thing that I mentioned earlier. And, um, you know, it's just a way to form extra connections interesting stuff. So at the end, I would play it again, mainly just focusing on the Russian, right? And um, I would do a lesson a day, 15 mi minutes would be dedicated to the new lesson, and the next 10 minutes would just be dedicated to reviewing the previous lesson, lesson or lessons, right? So that's how I went about that book. So how my way varied from Lucas' way is that he, um, there was a lot more kind of thorough repetition of the previous lessons, whereas mine, I just needed something to get me to the next day, right, to implement that habit. So all I worried about was one lesson, one day, I reviewed what I could, and I kept it moving. So this really helps me in terms of long-term motivation, which I am happy I did it that way. So it took me about five months to complete that book, and I did it Monday through Friday. So one of the interesting things I did was I had cultural days, let's say, on Saturdays and Sundays. So on Saturdays, I would go to a Russian conversation class here in Mexico City, and I really, you know, my, my listening comprehension was really too low to be there, but honestly, I just wanted to be where the language was spoken, you know? Um, nice motivation there. I would listen to the Asimil audios on the way in the Uber. And um, yeah, most almost everything was over my head, but you know, I did what I could. I understood what I could. And um, that was cool. On Sundays was the day that I would either like watch an episode, an episode or two of a show, 
a series or a movie. So that was basically how I, I studied the weekends, on the weekends, and it was really cool. On Sundays, I also had my italki class, right? And um, I took, I started taking italki classes from basically the beginning of my Russian studies. And this is something I've talked about um, several times uh, in a video and in some interviews, right? So basically, the first couple classes, we just learned the alphabet, went over the sounds, but then after that, we were going into like kind of conversation stuff, right? And I have this kind of method that allows uh, you just basically to implement a system to where speaking just emerges, natu emerges naturally. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave the video in the description, go into much deeper detail, but basically the main idea is I'll talk about something that I did recently or something that I will do, relevant things. Or I'll, you know, in the earlier stages, I would just basically say, how do you say this in English, right? And the teacher would tell me, she would write it to me, so then I would read it, practice pronunciation, and basically the idea was that I had a system in place, you know, and then I'm doing my input work always, and eventually, since you're just taking the italki classes once a week, um, use the language more and more, eventually it starts emerging, and there comes a point where you're just speaking, right? And at the end of the lessons, I would have these sheets full of all the things I wanted to say and with the audio and I would sometimes review those. Very good stuff. So when I finished that Asimo book, I started incorporating other things. I started listening to the Russian with Max podcast and I would follow it along with the transcript that he provides and I would use that through Link, right? So when I started that, um, I didn't understand much, but as time went on, you know, your comprehension just really goes up, right? So around the same time, I started doing also the Link mini stories that, you know, Steve is always talking about. Um, so basically, I would read through the mini stories, and then I would just listen to them, and I just would do one lesson a day. And then in the evenings, I would do 25 minutes of the... Um, all the Richard short stories books, the short stories in Russian. I would do 25 minutes of that, and um, you know, I would basically just try to read the paragraph, and then do like translations of what I didn't understand. Sometimes it was basically the sentence. You know, um, some people say that this kind of approach takes away from the joy of reading. I've never really felt that. I kind of like how, you know, as you go along reading and translating the whole story or whatever you're reading just kind of unlocks. So um, that's pretty cool for me. Um, around this time, I started using uh, the Teach Yourself Russian book. And the Teach Yourself Russian book is, you know, it's kind of a functional course, right? Where Asimo gives you books, well, lots of information about like, daily life, like real conversation stuff um, in real life situations. But uh, the Teach Yourself book is kind of like real life situations in not a social way like Asimov is, but a functional way. Like, you know, okay, we're going to the museum. Oh, we're at the, the, the train station. And um, Asimov provides grammar as well and these kind of things. But, you know, like the Asimov book, I just ignore that. I just focus on the vocabulary. Uh, and the dialogues. So, yeah, I only did that on Mondays, 25 minutes, and until I eventually just finished the book. So that brings us towards around the end of the year in uh, 2019. So around this time, I was able to basically, um, you know, I was a fledgling Russian speaker. I was understanding uh, what I could, speaking what I could, but basically, you know, I was communicating in Russian the whole class, even though, you know, you know, it is what it is, and I'm sure it was very off in many ways, but, you know, I was, I was in the game, and I was, and I was going for it, and, um, you know, the English wasn't a part of uh, my classes like how it was before, because, you know, like how I said, 
you give yourself a system and then all of a sudden, you know, you speak more and more Russian, you understand more and more, to the point where, you know, English is not so necessary, right? You know, when I do my um, italki classes now, any time that I need to communicate something in English, I never say it. I just write it, so what I need to say, the teacher goes, oh, it's this boom, 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 and we move on. So, that's how I did that. So, um, right around, yeah, January of last year, I started getting more interested, just having passive listening be something more that was constant. I remember I would listen to the Real Russian podcast while I was hanging around the room, or maybe as I walked to Starbucks or some other place or walked back. A couple months later, I started to learn a little more about the immersion language learning stuff, you know, Ajax, Katsumotsu, Matt versus Japan, and all that. And um, I would then make watching um, authentic Russian series movies without subtitles, right? So around this time I implemented that and I still have a portion of my study day dedicated to that very thing. Um, I was doing more passive listening and um, I even was um, falling asleep to Russian for a few months uh, where I would put it on for like 15 minutes as I would fall asleep and it, it would just shut off after 15 minutes. But um, this actually was more of a technique that I used to fall asleep as opposed to this is going to really help my Russian, but um, I haven't done it for a while. I've just fallen, I mean, lost the habit, but it's a little something I should. So in 2019, when I was doing the Ollie Richards book, I was actually still like, um, you know, reading some Spanish stuff. So I would do this kind of technique where, you know, you do 25 minutes in activity and then you take a break for five minutes and do another 25. So I would, in 2019, I would do 25 minutes of the Ollie Richards book, and then I would read in Spanish for 25 minutes. But um, last year, I <laughs> really didn't uh, have any kind of structured Spanish thing towards like more so the end of the year where I kind of like got consistently started watching a show. But you know, I was dependent on um, uh, basically my ex girlfriend just to, um, you know, as Spanish practice while I was really honing in on uh, Russian. So I upped it to 30 minutes uh, of reading Ollie Richards' book. And um, I noticed towards the end of it, like right in the last story, that um, I had basically made a breakthrough where I could basically read through the story and not need to translate. I wrote a, I made a video about that, how it was like this kind of like wow moments. And uh, yeah, so that was pretty cool. Um, around this time as well, I started to be more, well, write out my italki sessions and listen, and uh, while listening to this, this Russian talk show, right? So I'd write out my italki sessions, and uh, I did that for a while. Um, at the end of May, I um, did the 30 day record yourself challenge. So um, I came up with this idea, this 40 hour, seven day language challenge idea. I'm sure you've heard of it, but um, I. S I did this 30 day record yourself speaking challenge and I lined it up to where the last day of that speaking challenge, which is you speak 30 to uh, 30 seconds to one minute and you record yourself. Well, I set it up that the last day of that challenge would be the day before the 40 hour, seven day language challenge. And that kind of helped uh, give me a boost in my speak and make it quite consistent. So that basically leads us to uh, the year and a half, right? So um, the last week, I had this crazy, you know, 40 hours of Russian, like this pure immersion week that I, I did in my uh, apartments. And I'll leave the video in the description talking about all the things I did, but you can imagine that it was pretty full on. So um, that's it, guys. I hope you like this video and I hope this gave you an idea of what it was like to study that first year and a half, all the things that I did. And um, I would like to continue this video going just to kind of have a, a document of what I did, you know? So right now, in when, I get to, when we get to January, it will be three years. So, you know, I've made a lot of progress, but it's just that thing where 
the more <laughs> the more you study, the more you realize how far you have to go. And uh, I'm happy with my progress, but wow, I know the road's not going to be a short one. So, hope you guys like this video. Uh, if you got something out of it, share it, give it a like, subscribe, tell me what did you think about this way of study. Uh, no grammar, that's pretty unorthodox. Um, did you guys use some of the same study methods or how was that and how's your Russian studying going now? Please let me know. And remember that language learning, oof, it's a journey and the come up never ends. So. Stay on your come up and we'll see you next time.